Wait, 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 before you just, you know, hop all over me for this, and before you just start, you know, thinking a bunch of different conclusions, all right, I want you to know that I didn't find trouble. Trouble found me. I was minding my own business, doing my own thing, and out of nowhere, I stumbled upon it. Look, I promise you, this video was never supposed to happen. Here, let me explain. As you grow older, you start to realize that your golden years fly by. Everything has them, right? Every person, every place, everything, every noun has an era of when it was at its peak and was truly able to capture what made that time special. You and I, we call this phenomenon nostalgia, a concept that will later be an important motif, if you will, within this documentary. So, when you're pondering at late night 3am, because we all know that 2am is for Anna Nolik, you start to wonder where those childhood memories have gone, or where they went. You realize that they only come twice in your life, and if you're lucky, they happen in periods of time, perhaps even more than once, when you're a kid, and then when you get into young adulthood, into your 20s and beyond. However, this could just be the case for me. As for others, it could be the teenage years, or maybe they didn't have fond memories of being a teen. I know I didn't, though I guess I could argue that was really a mix. In any event, I'm getting distracted. When they enter their adult life, the golden years are ones to be written in the stars or put into some olimac, like as if anybody reads those anymore, which I'm slowly fading into that category myself, at least to me. Though I suppose it's possible to be part of two different categories. Regardless, although my childhood was, as I've stayed before in previous videos, rough, which is putting it lightly, and my life just continues to be a more challenging <laughs> uphill battle, as I've come to accept, I'm just one of those people where life will always be an uphill battle. Call me a cynic, and you wouldn't be wrong, but it's made me realize that if I truly succeed in whatever endeavor I choose to venture on, I will be better than the ones before me, because it wasn't handed to me, I didn't have any help, I had to earn what I have or what I may have in the possible near or distant future. Cynicism isn't always negativity, and it doesn't always mean that it has to be all doom and gloom. I found that to be a bit optimistic. However, I can't stop thinking about all the things that made up my childhood and block out the rest of what still plagues me today. Yet, if I could just focus on what made my most beloved era, the 2000s, great, I think I can manage some other things and some other thoughts that impacted my life for the better and not for the worse. We've all had that one family member who just won't shut up about their time in the 50s, 60s, or 70s, perhaps even the 80s. Total snooze fest. Of course, not only is it annoying, but it's also very envy-inducing, which makes others wish that they could live in those eras as life was better or live in a time that they knew well. They begin longing for the time where life was simpler, life was fun and free, life was easy living rather than this toxic cesspool known as modern-day society plagued by instinct gratification and government authoritarianism. That, and the stranglehold that social media has on us today. In any event, philosophy aside, people from all over the internet and in real life long to relive their fondest years, or as I call them, their greatest hits. Of course that may come off as a mockery, but I find that to be true, how people wish to recall their best moments in life. They want to relive what made them the most happy, and you can't blame them. It's what made them smile and truly understand why. There's a certainty of nostalgia, a sense of it, almost like an overpowering wave when you recall the memories of what made your childhood great and what that childhood was like. Everyone has something that they will remember forever, or most commonly, everyone has multiple things that they will remember forever. There's nothing more defeating in life than seeing your childhood fly by. Everyone can relate. For me, it was the 2000s. In the 2000s, to me, it was an era that I still like to think that I live in. The early 2010s were okay, and a lot of good memories still stem from that, yes, but it was different, and from the tail ends of the 2010s and into the upcoming 2020s is going to be completely different from what was the 2000s. It's almost like the 2000s and the 2020s are almost two different timelines. I can remember how innocent the 2000s were, listening to one of my all-time favorite bands, and it's probably my favorite band, Zebrahead, playing Kingdom Hearts, Sly Cooper, the Final Fantasy games, 
dark cloud spectrobe origins, including Beyond the Portal, which by the way is a very underrated game. Watching professional wrestling, Disney Channel, CW4 Kids, Jet X, Toon Disney, reruns of Beverly Hills, 90210, Melrose Place, and MTV before it was bad, all right? MTV was actually good. Anyways, I can go on about 2000s Disney Channel, CW4 Kids, Toon Disney, old PlayStation 2 games they still play to this day, 2000s Rock, Sonic the Hedgehog, Ice Cream, along with 2000s movies and television that really made something of my life. But there's something that I want to address. Stories, if told well, are the most beautiful art form one can achieve. As I've said before, I can remember playing old PlayStation 2 games that I still play today. I remember Fable 3 on the Xbox 360, Dragon Age Origins, Grand Theft Auto 4, and one of my most fondest, next to the PlayStation 2 games, was playing Sonic 06, also known as, two, also known as Sonic 2006. Which is odd, since I actually liked that game, and it was absolutely phenomenal, at least for me, because I actually had a working copy. Now, if you had a working copy, you would probably think completely different of what people think of the game now. But I want you to know that the working copy truly transformed my mind, and it really set the standard of what Sonic was, along with Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 for the Dreamcast, which I also have both for both consoles and games, but that's a completely different video. I'm getting distracted too much, and I'm getting derailed. Uh, philosophy, cynicism, nostalgia, and intellectual pondering aside, it's funny how I lead into this, talking about how even from a young age, stories that are told well, even those that are heart-wrenching in terms of emotional roller coasters, shaped who I am today which introduces you to what I was talking about earlier, bringing it all full circle, talking about nostalgia and memories, and why it's important in this video, and how I stumbled upon one of the greatest mysteries to ever be uncovered. Tonight, you and I, we're going to take a deep dive into the unknown and enter the shady back corners of the world. I grab my Keyblade, ready to take on this giant, and I answer questions as to what happened to one of my most precious memories, and more importantly, the overlooming question. How did my favorite childhood restaurant turn into a Chinese gambling ring? October 22nd, 2020. It was a beautiful day outside. Sunlight trickled through my window as its warmth contrast with the coolness of the outside woke me up from my slumber. It was a cold, crisp kind of day, and it was kind enough to give me clean air. Though where I live, the air quality is usually pretty high, but you get the idea. There was not a single cloud in the sky, I swear. But little did I know that although the sun had shined brightly that day, it was the beginning of a very, very dark day. The tree line looked empty this time of year, but it was that emptiness that was comforting, and it just so happened that I had to deliver a package to the post office. So, that was my first quest. I took my leather jacket, as it was too cold for my letterman, or as I call it, my stadium jumper, though I suppose you could also call it a Yusoka jumper, but that's not the point. I went over to my cat Miko, and I pet Miko. I messed with him some for a bit, played with him, and then I was on my way to deliver the package. While I was out, I realized that I had more to do than just drop off a package to ship across the country. I had to pick up a few things at Home Depot as well, so my day consisted of dropping off a package at the post office and collecting the items I needed at Home Depot. You know, crafting materials. You never know when you're going to need them. So I left camp, uh, sorry, my house, and I was off to the post office. I arrived at the post office successfully, and I delivered the package. So. That was one quest completed, and I even got XP! Next, I was off to Home Depot for crafting materials and other things that I could hand the Moogles for synthesis. After I had brought the materials I needed from Home Depot to the car, I was off again. I felt something in my stomach, a type of ripple that echoes through you, a growl that demands consumption, a feeling that we all know too well. Hunger. 
I was starving. I realized I haven't eaten anything all day. I thought I was getting Japanese, but then I realized that they're closed due, the, due to the current COVID-19 pandemic. So then I thought about Chinese, and I realized I didn't have as much money as what I thought I did. Must have been all those materials that I bought. In any event, I was thinking to myself, where could I go to get myself something to eat? I could trade a few dollars here and there. I thought about McDonald's and Burger King, but I wanted to save my collectibles. Uh, excuse me, coupons. They're good till the 10th of January, at least at that time. As of 2021, I doubt I'll use them anytime soon since they're expired. But it dawned on me. Wasn't there a burger joint around here? Uh, near camp. Excuse me, the house. Th the camp. I keep calling it the camp. <laughs> and I remembered that it wasn't there. A wave of nostalgia washed over me as I remembered its name, W.B. Cody's. And this is where I was set off on this nostalgic road, only to find that an hour later I would uncover something truly horrifying. For those of you who don't know, W.B. Cody's is a small town restaurant that has a Western theme, a Western gimmick, a Western style. They had wagons, a taxidermied bear, a vintage antique Western interior, and to describe exactly what it looked like on the inside, to describe this Western interior, it's difficult to describe. It was rustic in nature and natural feeling, yet elegant and true to the time of the mid to late 1800s. A good example would be take the saloons from Red Dead Redemption. If you put the saloons from Valentine, Rhodes, Saint Denis, and Blackwater and put them all kind of together, that's kind of what it looked like. And yet, it was amazing. Even their sign out front was something you'd see in the 1800s. It was pure magic. And magic is hard to find. As a kid, the food was beyond infamous and definitely possessed by legendary status. It, it certainly had something that made it better than the rest of the restaurants in town. I used to go there all the time. One of the things that I think that never left me as a kid was how I always wanted to go to other worlds. And when those so-called other worlds were created in real life, it was just bliss, pure magic. I never wanted to leave, whether it was Disney World, Fantasyland, King Richard's Fair, or even a themed amusement park. It didn't matter what it was. If it was Halloween and there was a whole amusement park where the real life version of the 1998 movie Halloween Town, or maybe it was in December and there was a place suddenly like Christmas Town, or the whole amusement park was filled with this colorful Victorian houses, green and red rooftops with bright yellow windows and frost on the glass and candy canes that stood taller than trees. The shops were charming and playful and inviting. It was truly like going on an adventure. And I've always wanted to go on an adventure. And I think that's a large part of what made me love Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, and other JRPGs. And unique to this, Red Dead Redemption. And hopefully, well, as of now I have played it, but back then at the time I did not, Cyberpunk 2077. I don't think I'll post any Cyberpunk content, because it's not within my channel niche of Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy, but neither is RDR and a few other videos that I have in mind. But maybe I'll make some exceptions. I don't know. Maybe. It's something to think about. Currently, I'm trying to get all my non- Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy videos out of the way so I can then focus on making that type of content, but that's besides the point. Back on main topic, WB Cody's was the staple of Western barbecue and it still is remembered to this day by many in the town, and made me, as a kid, feel like I stepped into the role of a real-life rugged cowboy. But what happened? What was the reason WB Cody's no longer is this proud restaurant that it was? What made it just fade away? W.B. Cody's went out of business in 2012. That was almost eight or nine years ago. In its place, the Sea Goose, a brunch cafe, opened up, and that too went under and out of business. Now we have the No Bull Steakhouse. Get it? No Bull? I believe that these businesses failed from location. This is one of the reasons I believe WB Cody's also went out of business. It was on a road adjacent off of Route 1 within Southern Rhode Island within the United States. It wasn't a good location. In fact, when I went looking for the, owner of, the owners of WB Cody's, it wasn't even worth filming my search within the phone book because there was no number to be found and it was basically non-existent. But when finding their phone number from their Facebook page, that's where I decided to dial and see if I could get in touch with the owners, unfortunately, they too fell off the face of the earth. 
This brings me to what I had discovered while on this nostalgic road, and what it was. It was more than that. It was absolutely horrifying. Before I show you what you're about to see, I want you to know that I had investigated WB Cody's before, but when I was doing my investigation, I was outed, I was caught, and then I was thrown out. But some information may still exist from my old investigation, and perhaps could be useful within our first deep dive look here. But other than that, this is our first time, our first deep dive look into the Dragon Slayer. So grab your keyblades, guns, swords, shields, and katanas, gear up, because this is where it all truly begins. I took to the internet and I googled WB Cody's. Afterward, I clicked on their Facebook page. Once on their Facebook page, I felt an even more powerful force of nostalgia wash over me. Scrolling down the page, I remember it all just as how I used to. The bear, the logo, the decor, the everything. Granted, there wasn't many photos of the interior, but there was more than enough smiles to compensate. More than enough. And that is what hit home. That these people who are now smiling because it's a moment captured in time will never be able to smile again at WB Cody's. It was here that I read the following. To all our friends, customers, and seasonal visitors, after serving almost 20 years of serving in the westerly area of Rhode Island, it is within our heavy hearts to announce the closing of WB Cody's. Our sadness is tempered with the many dear friendships that we have forged over the intervening years. We thank you all for your support. It has been a privilege to serve and participate in so many worthwhile events within the community that we share. This is not a goodbye, but a new chapter for us. With much respect, Marty, Annie, Stephanie, Janice, Angela, Danielle, Bonnie, Lisa, Dorothy, and the rest of the great staff from WB Cody's. Merry Christmas. WB Cody's closed around Christmas time. Wiping the tear that curves down the side of my face, I remembered what I was here for, to figure out what happened to the Wild West restaurant. I scrolled back to the top and I looked at their contact info. There had to be someone still holding a line. There had to be somebody still at the faith of WB Cody's that I could contact and talk to. There had to be someone I could connect with. And I saw their website. I just had to know, was the website still up? Could I even have an inkling of information as to what led me to this information of what I have happened and what you're about to see? About what have happened to my beloved restaurant? I had to know. I needed to connect. I clicked the website link, and this is when it happened. What you're about to see is pure, raw, uncut footage of how I entered a Chinese gambling ring. Brace yourself, you won't believe it. It was here that the loading screen was completed. Now I can't read Chinese. I'm more of a kanji, katakana, haragana kind of guy. Though I had been to Hong Kong, China a few times in my life, this wasn't simplified Chinese. No, 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 no. This was traditional mainland text. This was traditional Chinese. So I took to the internet and I went to find what it meant. And what I found was shocking. Has passed security encryption test. Reputation is supreme, waiting for you to fight. Now, I know that the translation isn't the most perfect nor the most accurate, or perhaps it is, and the lost subtext of reputation is supreme, waiting for you to fight actually meant something. There's a lot of civil unrest in China. Hell, right now, every corporation and money making group, even nonprofit organizations, are supporting the civil unrest in China and the United States. Politics aside, that is a theory. What matters here the most is, this specific line has passed security encryption. This is what set me into wondering, what have I just got myself into? What was this that I had stumbled upon? I had to dig deeper. And so I dug. Here we are at the login screen. I couldn't believe my eyes. This had sketchy written all over it. You wouldn't believe it. What had become of my Western restaurant? Who and what changed this antique relic into what I now believe is something to do with money? I wasn't sure, but I had to investigate. 
Let's take a look at the login page for a minute. Believe it or not, a login page can tell you a lot about a website, or for anything else for that matter, it's the front door. If the front door has wood rot and the hinges look rusted but the lights are on, you know something's going on that's not supposed to. In this case, many clues were left behind. First, we have an image in the center right. This caught my eye immediately because it's in the center of the screen. Two flying eight balls with a chip of some kind, or a token of some kind, chasing after it. Granted, the illustrations are cute, but I refuse to be deceived by this. To the bottom right, you can see and clearly tell that these are bank logos, corporate icons, or something that has to do with finances and money. Most corporations follow a type of style or symbolic image to represent their firm. That's why all bank logos look the same. Not that they are, but they all follow a certain style and design. Logos may, although may not be the same, there's a type stylized design that is exclusive to the type of corporation. There's a name for it which escapes me at the moment, but excluding the WeChat icon, which is what I suspect is a promoted way of communication between those who go onto the site, clearly gives off a financial vibe pretty well. So we know surely that this has something to do with money, but with what? When we look at the bottom left, there's a QR code. Now, I did try scanning the QR code with my phone, just using the built-in QR scanner reader in my camera. It brings me to the mobile version of the site, which is self-evident and easy to figure out, and it says mobile lottery right there. But it's worth checking out anyway. I'm on an investigation, after all. Okay, so going over to the bottom section of the site, you can see a lot. Everything from 18 plus warning labels to the term recharge, which we all know means to withdraw money from your account, to even many people spending money playing this game. Chinese Yuan, the money used in China, is about $6.49 to the US dollar as of now. However, back in October, it was up by 23 cents. It has gone down in value to what we have now in present day, which is the $6.49, but still stronger than our current currency. You may also see copyright as though a corporation company or some form of entity whoever they are, owns this site and the money trading that goes on inside. But we must press on. We have to. We have to know more. We have to investigate. At the top of half of the login page, you can see that this strange Chinese gambling site is called Lottery Hall. Interesting. Better name than boring old casino. Frankly, I think when places have a more flashy name and actually deliver on it, it's a lot better than naming something just to hype it up. Cool name for gambling sites, but not enough to make me leave satisfied with the answers that I want. You can see that there is the type logo of Lottery Hall. A type logo is a logo that uses some kind of text. Letters or words that make up the symbol of the company or some kind of uh, typeface or logo. Most companies have them in one form or other. In any event, we can see that beside the type logo is Home, Lottery Hall, UU Live, Activity Center, Mobile Lottery, and Help. Something I want to point out. Notice here at the top it says, Please, dear, log in. That is extremely formal in a Chinese greeting sense. There is something that you hear from elders. It's something that you hear from high-ranking officials in the mainland. It's something that a white-collar suit and tie would say. Next to this, user registration, but we can't do anything without proper access and clearance. This comes to me as a roadblock, some kind of hurdle. It's time to go undercover. We have to enter the belly of the beast. It's here that I, Rain Lionheart, Enter the Chinese gambling ring. Going under the name Lao Shi, which means teacher in Chinese, I hastily enter believable information that I could use to get into the ring. I had to know what was going on. I had to know who or what was responsible for taking away the website of my most favorite burger joint in town. I enter the information. Each keystroke I made a chess move in deceiving those who may think I'm a fake, which I am, but a good one. I make sure that I type everything that I need, a believable passcode to remember, something that you would see common, a, a name to fool everyone who is on the site, taking a shady invitation code that I was given, making myself a new identity in this strange new world. With my credentials approved and my fake persona ready to enter the place of gambling, I grip my keyblade and I push through the door. It's heavy, but I press on. It was here that I saw exactly what happened to my most beloved restaurant's website. 
I had done it. I had successfully entered the Chinese gambling website. I was in awe, stunned at the place. I couldn't imagine what was going on here and all kinds of shadiness to it. Every nook, every corner, every cranny had reeking scent of underbelly in some Shanghai laundromat in some back alley of a neon lit street somewhere. Immediately, I began to investigate. There were so many things to look at. I had to contain myself, reel myself in. What lies here for me? What lies here for us? I had to know. I had to figure out what was going on. WB Cody's legacy depended on it. I was greeted with a large pop-up window, and it was bombarding with flashing lights and bright colors and all kinds of things. The following message that's put in front of me goes. But before we get into that, you should know that faith, trust, and a little bit of pixie dust in this place seems to uh, really be the motif, if you will. You'll see why in a second, but this is just what the message says, and this is what gives it all away. Dear member, hello. If you encounter the customer service cannot be accessed normally, please add the only designated secret chat member service number in the lottery hall. The secret chat customer service of the lottery hall lobby will not be active to active member chat secret chat friends. If you encounter a secret chat friend and prompt to add a close friend, please add it carefully to prevent from being deceived. A little ironic, don't you think? Well, there's a lot that we can break down here. I'm serious. Look. A few lines stand out here. Let me explain why. Looking at the message, we can pick a few lines that stand out as obscure, odd, or even in this case, suspicious. Now, there's a lot to break down here. First, we have a secret chat that only people who are in close connection with each other can view. Second, we know that people have been tricking users of this gambling website into thinking that they are customer service to gather information. I strongly believe that this is the Chinese police at work, posing as technical support representatives and fishing for information that the suspecting illegal gamblers are willingly give them are willing to give them under the false pretense that they are customer service when in all reality they're not they're actually the cops and those who get arrested were the warning signs to the other members who eventually caught on now also i might add that the word secret comes up four times within this message i don't know about you but if i had something to keep quiet i won't keep saying it's a secret over and over and over again However, all kinds of suspiciousness is here when you think about it. From now on, we're going to add a secret chat counter in the corner over there. How many times does the word secret come up within the entire site? They continue to talk about a short secret chat tutorial for mobile. The word comes up maybe four times, so that counts us to eight. And then another two times at the bottom of the message, which then makes us ten. If you couldn't tell, this place has a high value in its secrets. Pretty shady. Here we are in the main hub of the gambling ring, and there is a whole landmass to cover here. In terms of information, however, we're going to start with the profile picture. A lot of the profile picture customization is like any other that you would find on a website no matter where you go. This allows you to customize your profile appearance. It's pretty standard, and no matter what country you're in, you're always going to find something like this, so it's not really something to dive into. But there are some crazy profile pictures. Everyone from famous K-pop and Chinese pop stars, also known as Canto Pop, athletes, Graham Elliott, or at least his look-alike, United States presidents such as Bush, Jr., Donald Trump, global terrorists such as Osama bin Laden, and even entrepreneurs like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, former lady of the White House, Hillary Clinton. They have Putin, Kim Jong-il, Bruce Lee, Michael Jackson, basketball players like LeBron James and the late Kobe Bryant, and a few more. Now, if there's anything that you've noticed here as we customize our profile, make sure to let me know in the comments. That goes for if I missed any secrets that we can add to the secret counter. If there's anything that I missed that you found interesting, I could really get a discussion going in the comments. So it would be awesome if you guys paid attention and found some things that I may or may not have missed. Definitely make sure to keep an eye out and write it down. Anyways, after picking a profile picture that was to my liking, suiting for a spy undercover detective in the shady world of secrets and suspicion, looking to the left side you can see a menu bar. There is where all the information we need to uncover this mystery is held. It's kind of odd that they would hold everything in plain sight, but hey, I'm not one to judge. I want answers. Easier the better. But I'm not done with the homepage just yet. There's more to explore that you just have to see and that you have yet to see in this place. On the main feed, the homepage, if you will, there's active 
live users whose status is being posted as they win, spend, and bet. There's a mystery red envelope that seems to be a motif within this place, uh, a common reoccurrence. You'll see it pop up in a few areas. It seems as though there are, or that there were, a lot of things that may go on. I suspect that this mystery red envelope is digital equivalent to money wrapped in a brown paper bag with tape on it. But this is not necessarily always the case. You see, the red envelope is how you store your earnings, share earnings, and view reports in your winnings. But what makes it shady is that at the top of the page, we have envelope, valid period, amount, receiving condition, and receive. I want to see what receiving was all about, and we're faced with a message that in order to receive money, the charges are up to 500 yuan, which translates to $77.33, including inflation for United States dollars, also known as USD. Current time, of course, when it was up by $2 in October of 2020, then it was $75, but the principle is still the same. A little confusing, yes, but I'll make it a little more easier for you to understand. Okay, imagine that you're winning money. However, the amount, let's say 300 bucks. Let's say that you win $300. Now you have to pay $77 out of that 300 so that someone can receive $300 or so that you can receive your $300 in earnings. That's a jip if I've ever seen it. Now it says that it costs 500 to recharge. Recharge means to put money on your card. This concept is another motif within the system. You have to put money on your card in order to do any Anything, meaning that you gotta at least have $77 to bet, to gamble, to spend money, anything. Normal casinos and gambling houses are regulated, monitored, and checked. There is no limit to the minimum of how much you can bet. You can bet a dollar or you can bet a thousand dollars. But here, you need a minimum of 77. So let's round that out to 80. If you need at least 80 bucks to enter, sounds like a fee. Gambling fees? Sounds kind of sketchy. Something you see in noir movies when they walk up to the iron door and the guy slides the little block in the middle and he asks for the password and you have to pay for a fee. Anyways, since when do you have to pay to engage in gambling? Sounds like an insurance fee. If money is lost over online or if you pay for money to be given to you or someone else rather than do it directly, if someone or something goes wrong, then at least the house gets to keep its money rather than being genuine. Imagine entering a saloon and renting in online, for example, and you have to pay $50 to get in. You go in, you gamble, and you lose. Either way, the house gets its profit. But in this case, I think the fee isn't necessarily insurance. Although I think it's a part of it, I think it's also a silence fee to guarantee that the money that's gotten or gets from the sender uh, to the receiver, no questions asked. And the view is hidden from whoever or whatever. Not that it shouldn't be, but the fact that it has to go through a clear your distinction between public and hidden clearly indicates that the view is meant to be private. Legitimate or not, it's questionable, and there are so many different ways to pay. It's almost like there's a middleman. We have bank, airplay, WeChat pay. Granted, we could go in depth about each of these banks, but the web is complicated enough as it is, and I'm sure that later on we'll discuss some of these banks and just how shady is the gambling ring itself. Regardless, carrying on, we have a lot to uncover. Okay, we have withdraw, help center, drop out, which means to log out in this case is the icon chat. All right, or excuse me, the chat icon. Now, why is this important? Well, the main page is complete. Looking upon the focus of the main page, two words stand out, okay? The two words that stand out, the name has been mentioned more than once in this documentary and the name that we're all here for. Lottery Hall. It's there I moved my cursor up to its name. I was eager to get in. I had to see what was going on. I needed to know what took away my beloved Western-themed restaurant. I clicked on it, and I was brought into the lion's den. Here is where it was able to see everything. I was able to see every single thing, everything. You had it all. Cards, coins, slots, dice, cups. You had it all. Every gambling game you can think of is all right here, labeled into different sections, each with, the, with, each with its own name. Happy color, all colors, fast three, TM color, PK10. Isn't that a gun? 11 out of 5, 3D, and... Uh, uh, God, this is going to be a hard one to pronounce. Prematuration 3? Prematuration? 
prematuration. Anyways, I'll probably figure out how it says later, but that's not the point. I'm pretty sure it's called prematuration. Well, pre-muteration? Pre-muteration 3? Sounds like a video game, doesn't it? Pre-muteration 3. By the way, at the time of this recording, I actually figured out that's not pre-muteration 3. It's permutation. I'm such an idiot. Anyways, that's not the point, okay? Each of the categories you see here are different games. Each of these colors represents a form of gambling. Another tab opens up, and we can see all the sauciness begins. You can see all kinds of things that go on here. Look at this tab. This is a live girl stream. Now, due to current pandemic COVID-19, there isn't anything showing, thank God. But it's still not something to just overlook. It's nothing more than girls streaming and teasing for money. It's an incentive to come and gamble. Like they say, sex sells. And here, it's no different. I go to the next tab, something catches my eye right away, and I had to see the support chat. I went to the support chat. I couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, my old custom code from when I first investigated the site in minor detail. I was nervous. Do I say something? What should I say? With quick thinking, I typed Ni Hao incorrectly, of course, the first time, so I corrected myself. I got a response. This is what I got. They said, hello, I'm glad to serve you. How can I help you with something? I froze. Was this a bot? Was this an AI? Or was this a real person? Was this a Chinese police officer on the other end? I quickly exited it by the wording and it sounded like an AI, but regardless, even if it was a person, I had reestablished contact, but I wasn't gonna stick around. I ran to the Ren envelope and the screen loads. On the sidebar panel that I mentioned earlier, if you remember, there is a long list of features that are available. Everything from input of money to withdrawals, transferring funds, betting funds, lottery records, lottery rewards. The list goes on and on. Total snore fest. Chess record. Apparently chess is a thing here for gambling. Quite interesting. We can do a lot more, but we can't do much since we have no money to gamble with. And even if I tried, I needed to I need to set up a bank in China, which at the moment would be impossible. However, when exploring this tab a little more, open on my PC, there's a list of promotional gambling events. And this is something that's kind of interesting. Each one tells you the specific events that are happening for each gambling set in the section. This is absolutely insane. I can't even believe what I'm seeing. Constant promotion to spend and gamble. My beloved Western Burger Joint website is now a place where there's secret chat rooms everywhere, live girls entertaining the gamblers, and the website is telling you to be careful of tech support and customer service, and the money that's being pocketed by the players in this place is greater than $80. And last but not least, Everything is locked unless you give money. I can't help but thinking this is some kind of digital version of a smoky bar somewhere in some back alley with a rollout carpet and a bouncer at the front door and loan sharks sitting in the back corner next to a pool table and while all the big spenders are laughing it up at the bar. This is not where you want to be unless you're looking for trouble. And trouble is exactly what I was looking for. I clicked on a random banner and I was brought to this page, a photoshopped image, and they used American currency? Aren't they supposed to use Chinese Yuan? Then it clicked. They weren't just targeting the Chinese market, they were trying to bait in others too, possibly appeal to the American market. Now WB Cody's did not go under by any means or out of business because of being baited into Chinese gambling. No, although that would be a great tale, but they were faced with using American currency in the image. This is more than interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. I want to hear what your thoughts are on the Chinese gambling ring shrouded in secrecy and security using American banknotes as an advertisement. And this image goes for all the other links, not just this one. So let me know what you guys think. For example, if we click on another random banner, one that reads, your information is always confidential in Chinese, I can get the same image as before with no link, it can't access anything, but it's just another image that does the exact same thing. You think they're links, you think that you can investigate further, 
no. You cannot navigate any more than what is already brought to you. The whole page is one big image. Both of them are, and I suspect, that the whole banner portion of the website is exactly like this. They went into Photoshop, made an image, then went into InDesign, and they made a text page layout, and then used the file from web development to create this. I am most certain of it. If you remember the beginning of this documentary, I said that I had a mobile version, or they have a mobile version that I tried out. Well, here is the confirmation needed to show you that they have this gambling ring not just on PC, but on mobile as well. I scanned the QR code with the built-in reader via camera, but there's nothing special here. There's nothing really to know. They bring you back to the same reroute page because they want you to log in twice. Now I'm going to take your attention and direct it over here for a moment. This is where things start to take a real sketchy turn, more suspicious than what we already are of this place. This is the help guide in quotation marks. By the way, this is no such thing as a help guide. This is a terrible tutorial. This is worse than the Jump Force tutorial. This is absolute, this is trash, okay? This is not what it's supposed to be. When we look at daily withdrawal, this is where I suspect that things are meant to be discreet. How discreet? Well, let's look at the message. In order to provide a better service experience, we reduce the processing time of withdrawal orders for the majority of users. Five withdrawals can be made per day and recommend that users reasonably arrange the daily withdrawal time and frequency. What they forgot to mention was according to their schedule. This I do not believe. I believe that because they, they know there are cops watching, in order to slow down traffic and to not raise suspicion, they tell people to spread out the amount of times they're pulling out money from their banks. Otherwise, banks are going to look at someone who keeps draining money over and over and over, which then alerts the banks and then which gives them a paper trail. And if they know that someone is gambling, the cops may want to use that paper trail to find the illegal gamblers. Now, I have no idea how it works in China, but this is super unregulated and clearly is centered around a members only club closed off to the public fees to get in live girls and spending live lots large amounts of money at the time sounds like illegal gambling to me from here you can see that they tell you about how to bind a bank card I knew it. I knew there was something fishy here, and I knew that there always was. You have to use a traceable credit card or debit card that the gambling ring can use to take money from you or to give you in the event that you win. So you gotta bind a bank card so that you can have money to start out with so that you can put money down to gamble. Sounds interesting. Next, we have withdrawals again, but this time they go into detail about the withdrawals. Recharges. They write, after the computer version is successfully logged in, click the recharge button at the top of the page to enter the recharge page. At present, the platform provides multiple top methods such as bank transfers, online payment, AirPlay, WeChat payment, UnionPay, QQ Wallet, Cloud Quick Pass, Quick Pass, DJ Wallet, fill out the regular information form truthfully and submit the recharge order and after about one or two minutes, refresh the account balance and the account will be credited. Click on my account, Transaction History, to view daily transaction details, it is recommended to use a bank transfer to recharge for long recharge. Interesting! The help guide is basically a how to illegally gamble handbook. Everything from financially binding agreements to allow for the transactions to control over money, over your personal card, being able to se secretly transfer money to other gamblers, and even making sure that the communication is limited between members and not with the outside and for customer support. But this, this takes the cake. If you're watching this video and stuck around for this long and still haven't believed me that this place is illegal gambling, what you're about to see amazed me. And I hope it will amaze you too. Looking at the following text, it says, Hello, distinguished members. Our deposit bank, Agricultural Bank, Lura, has been suspended. Please do not transfer to it again. Please log out of your account and click the I want to recharge to get the latest bank account to recharge. The, co the company is responsible for the losses caused by payment to this deactivated account. Thank you. Wow. 
that shows it's illegal. Calling yourself a company is putting it lightly. The bank you used, the account you used to store your profits of illegal gambling got shut down by the Chinese government and now you're telling your members to move their cash elsewhere. When I go to a casino and I gamble, I don't tell, they don't tell me what bank accounts I can and cannot use and I don't tell them if someone's looking into my bank records. Even if China is a communist country, there are hundreds of banks to choose from and this is the one where you store all of your money and someone or something exposed it or somehow the secret got out and now your bank account is possibly well not only your bank but your bank account and anything that's linked with it got suspended and we all know that in this case suspension does not mean temporary it's permanent I had to Google this bank. I had to find out who pulled the plug on this operation and why they did it. I needed answers. I was craving it, salivating at the bit. Who pulled the plug on this bank storing illegal money? Who did it and why? I take to Google and I copy and paste what I'm looking for. Search results come up, but it's not what I wanted. Who is this Lou Runna? Who is he? Or who is she? Who are they? What happened to the bank that got suspended? Something's going on. I googled the Agricultural Bank of China. The Wikipedia page, and uh, it was a slight bombardment of information, comes at me. Swatting them away with my keyblade, I began to look at something in particular, zeroing in on a specific idea. I went to their Wikipedia page and I scrolled down. There has been... We'll use the word some interesting information. There has to be something here I can use. But alas, there's nothing. Not yet. The article itself is short and there is dense information. And it was more just like the patty of a burger, but without the flavor and the condiments. I went back to the suspension page and I went to the next available page. I searched for more information. I copied the text and I pasted it into Google Translate. What you see on the screen now is the translation from what was said. And the name I was looking for popped up. Chen Ratty. I think what I meant to say was Chen Ratai. I think Ratai is a lot better. Or Tay or something of the sort. Regardless, please excuse the total butchering. I searched for, and almost found, this guy first try. But he's a slippery one. I searched for his name and I put bank after it. And I found his LinkedIn page. Now this was it. This was the man who pulled the plug on the operation for putting money into a bank or possibly was one of the people handling the bank and laundering all that money for the gambling ring. Just looking at the description of who he is is a perfect man for the job. Here, read the description and don't tell me otherwise. An accomplished operations manager and team leader with strong building communication, negotiation, and organizational skills, and bilingual with business experience in Mandarin. A proven record of success developing solutions for complex operational needs and managing financial transactions through the entire process life cycle, which is interesting. Particular expertise in software and systems and, responsing and responding to a high intensity environment and a reliable internal resource available to navigate discrepancies and resolutions. A hands-on manager who prioritizes monitoring team on best practices and is able to fill any operational gaps on the team. This environment sounds very similar. Hell, this environment sounds like one similar to a gambling ring. Sounds like the perfect guy for managing environment where money is on the line. People could get heated, things could move quick, things need to move quickly and quietly. Not only this, but also he has the ability to start up a web-based platform and even finding the most proficient ways to make something like this run smoothly. I'm not accusing him of a crime he didn't commit, but research, time, digging, and evidence shows that this man is guilty on all accounts. This evidence is clear. This is the man who is managing the money at the same bank where the money from the gambling ring was held. I'm sure it was a whole division of people, but my best solution and my best idea about this is that the best way to commit a crime is to blend in with the crowd. 
Okay, you can see that he was worked at banks before, such as Bank of China. One thing I will say about this bank, if you paid attention to this documentary and what's been shown on screen, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, perhaps it wasn't shown. But the point is, is that the Bank of China is one of the four, or big four banks established in China, also known as the Big Four. They also are associated with other popular banks such as IBC, People's Republic of China Bank, Bank of the East Asia, or Bank of East Asia, HSBC, DBS, and many more, including Tencent, a questionable and shady company that has had mixed opinions about from the Western market. Returning to the website, I need to be able to get these guys to give me some cash in order to gamble with. After thinking about how much I wanted to put on the text field, I thought about 7,000 yuan. Depositing to myself? Or maybe I can give it to someone. Maybe that's how it worked. Maybe I could get them to give me money. There's, it's got to be a shot either way. There has to be something. I needed some kind of cash to start out with and take part in the gambling ring. After completing the text boxes, I need to think of a passcode, something that would be easy to remember. So I enter a passcode and made a mental note of the passcode I used. Suddenly, I had an account. I had no money, sure, but I made an account. I was one of them. Searching for more banks, I found that the same message as before with the suspension of the Agricultural Bank of China, but this time it's with Industrial and Commercial Bank. This one place I have not explored, the Activity Center. Even though we brushed over it before, we should still take a look at what exactly is here. What can we play? How can we play? Could we play and get some cash in our pockets? I had to take a look. I had to know. My eyes couldn't peel away. I clicked the nearest game I could find and I entered the room. I messed around for a while. I didn't really win anything, unfortunately. From there, I kind of continued to screw around, hoping I'd win or just see if something happened. I was going to push every button possible. I began to do some minor research looking into the banks that were involved. There were so many in where they were located. Uh, you know, I, I found that out too. But the point is, is that I, I looked at the banks that were involved, where they were located, how many of them there were, which banks were associated in the ring, and how many were holding cash, stuff like that. So really, I just kind of, you know, moved, moved on from that. Looking back at what I just went through, a door at the end of the abyss opens. Light shines through its warmth touch and glides over my skin. I stepped towards the light, exiting the dark abyss known as the Lottery Hall. Satisfied with what I had found and taking comfort in knowing what happened to my beloved Western Burger Joint and that the cops are cracking down on this place, I feel... satisfied. I feel like it was a job well done. To think that this video wasn't supposed to happen. To think that when I woke up that day, looking at the clouds, it was just the start of a small adventure that happened to be on memory lane. To think all of this would never happen. It's just almost fitting. I couldn't even begin to think about where that blue sky would have taken me. And yet here I am, uncovering the truth about WB Cody's barbecue restaurant, BBQ Bar and Grill. It went out of business due to poor location. It was probably a factor. And the website domain was up for grabs once it was up for sale. And a Chinese gambling ring took it and used it as a portal to their, lob to their lottery hall. If I didn't go outside that day, none of this would have ever happened. And I'm glad I did. Because I discovered something incredible. And I inspire all of you to find something incredible. Find something, whatever it may be, and investigate it. Sometimes going back in your memories is the best thing that you can do. Especially if it leads you on an adventure as wild as this. I'll leave more in the description in the comments. Thanks for watching.